Greg Williams, who's the, uh, the MVP of the Jets this year, might be Greg Williams. Like, I know he's a coach. Like, that's how good of a job he's done. When you think about how many different corners he's had to use, how many different linebackers, I mean, it's insane. And you, when you think back to that game one against Buffalo, C.J. Mosley gets hurt, and then it seems like the bottom fell out from under him. Now you would think that they would find a way to compensate for that, but they just didn't have any answers week one, which in hindsight hey, is kind of surprising. And I give Bob Schusen credit yeah. that he said at the beginning of the year, listen, this team's going to have to stay healthy to compete oh, because sure. they're very thin. But you know what I'm saying. I, I acknowledge the injuries, but you can't lose to Cincinnati oh, no. and Miami. No, 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 no. They were winless and, teams and, for and a you're reason. In, and right now that changes the narrative. And also one other thing that I, I'm a big believer in in sports, would the Jets have beaten the Steelers mm -hmm. if they needed to win? Because I think sometimes when you know your season's over, you can kind of play with that chip on your shoulder. It's a little different when the games mean something. Look at the Giants last year. They played themselves back into the playoff race. Remember? Right. They had the wins against San Francisco, the win against Tampa. All of a sudden, they're playing Philadelphia. The game's meaningful. They're still alive. And then as soon as it became meaningful, 19 nothing lead at the half, they completely spit the bit. And guess what? They ended up being a bad team again. So it's one thing when you know you're out of it and you're playing well with no pressure, how would they have played yesterday if they were the team that needed the win? Just say it. Don't know. I mean, you don't know because, look, they haven't had a meaningful game in, in right. quite so, some time. And, and, and you know what I will say, Don? In credit to Adam Gase, okay, at 1-7, in seven, the fact that he kept the room together, and look, I'm out there each week, I'm talking to guys, that room did stay together. That is still a unified front. You look at some of the other examples around the National Football League, whether it's the Jacksonville Jaguars, whether it's Detroit, whether it's the Carolina Panthers, how things just completely fractured at, you know, the middle yeah. of the year and then went south. Like one in seven could have become, right. you know, two and 13 or something, and then what we'd be talking about then. No, absolutely. The fact that didn't happen, and they actually went on a run and played good football the second half of the season, I think that says something. That's why I'm not firing a guy. Yeah. But I also think, and I think he would be the first to admit it, that if he had done a better job against Cincinnati and Miami, that they'd be still alive with all the injuries. As you said, Pittsburgh, right. they're playing a third-string quarterback, and that team is still alive. They didn't fold up shop. So... He still could have done a better job. And you can have both. You can be critical of Gase and also say that injuries played a factor. Both things can still be true. You know what's funny, too? That if you had to maybe go back and play some of those games from earlier in the year again, like the Cleveland game, uh, the Philly game, both Luke Falk starts, like if they played those games today, Jets have a pretty good shot of winning both of those games now, where they didn't have back in September because you sure. were playing a third-string quarterback. Well, absolutely. Yeah. And maybe if they play Dallas again, you lose. Maybe. You're right. You know, because that was an awful second half. And they hung on for dear life to win that yeah, game. Yeah, so it, you don't play all these things in a vacuum. We'll, you know, we'll see how it ends up playing itself out. Let's see if they even beat the Bills. They, the Bills can play nobody and you still lose the game. But still, you're looking at probably a 7-9 and nine team. And I think you're looking at what might have been, not because of injuries, but what might have been if they just did their job and beat Miami and Cincinnati. It's